<laughs> okay, alright, I'm putting all of you guys on game right now. I'm almost sure that most of you guys have never heard of this dude before. The only reason you really clicked on this is because you just assumed it would be funny by the title or you just fuck with my videos. Either way, I fuck with you, but let's get to it. Alright, now this dude, Brian Regan, is like the funniest fucking comedian that I've ever seen. Like, literally. I haven't seen this in years. It's been at least five years since I've seen this. But, bro, this shit is fucking hilarious. It's 50 minutes long, so we're not gonna watch the whole thing right now. Now we could do like 20 minutes or so and then do like another 20 minutes Maybe do like part two or part three or something like that I don't know it depends on if you guys like this shit If you guys are fucking with this shit just just give it a try Let's just without any further ado man Let me just shut up and get to it man It's just gonna be long enough as it is I'm telling you bro this dude is hilarious I haven't even fucking eaten breakfast yet So you might see me start eating a croissant or a fucking banana Tell you. Thank you very much. I fucking love this dude. Thanks. That's very nice. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Try not to laugh. Try not to laugh. See how long you make it. Yeah. Wow. That feels good. That's all the time I needed to fill. <laughs> <laughs> unless you don't, that, unless you just don't give a fuck <laughs> and you just want to laugh the I whole time. Like I, I actually just recently had to go to the emergency room though, and I had some stomach virus thing. I almost called an ambulance. Mm. It's weird, even considering calling an ambulance for yourself. You know, you call ambulances for other people, right? What are you supposed to say about yourself? Can you come get me? <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel so good. <laughs> Just come on and I'll be lying on the floor. <laughs> Just looking at the phone going, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. It was at night, so I drove myself to the emergency room. That's a nice relaxing drive. <laughs> no, after you. <yeah. laughs> Merge, everybody, merge. I'm only imploding. <laughs> so I, I pull up at the entrance to the emergency room. No valet parking. I mean, that's not the biggest oversight in our solar system. If there's ever a time where you want to go, can you park this because I need to collapse immediately? <laughs> No, I'm circling around the parking lot. <laughs> Can I park there? I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm dying too. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'll go up a couple levels. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I don't care if you're driving yourself or someone else to the emergency room. You still want to get out and run in with them. Are you supposed to drop somebody off and go park a car? Okay, you go in. Tell them you're shot. <laughs> Ask them if they validate. Unbelievable. <laughs> So I finally park, you know, go in to check in. They ask the most insulting question when you check into a hospital. What seems to be the problem? What seems? Well, it seems. It seems like everything on my inside wants to be on my outside. But I'm no doctor. Kind of condescending question. So they check me into my luxurious half room. There's a curtain down the middle. 
with a mystery patient on the other side. <laughs> and he's moaning over there. <laughs> thinking, man, they're never going to help me with him moaning like that. So I got to out moan him, you know? <laughs> Do you fucking see what this dude is? <laughs> He said I gotta out moan him. I'm crying. What the fuck? Quit moaning, we're all hurting. The whole floor is like a haunted choir. It's gotta be hell to work in this environment. This dude kind of reminds me of Troy Dan for some reason. I don't know. I don't know if he's Canadian or not. I'm writhing. This just kind of seems like Troy Dan humor to me. This shit's funny as fuck. Oh my god, I'm crying. Dude. I'm on a journey. <laughs> you have a painkiller or something? This is killing me. So she goes, How would you describe your pain? <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. Um, ouch. What, are we playing that pyramid game? Um, <laughs> excruciating. Uh, horrific. Uh, would rather have shards of glass in my eyes. How do I convey this to you? So she asks, how would you rate your pain? Four stars. Two enthusiastic thumbs up. She goes, how would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst? Well, you know, saying a low number isn't going to help you. Oh, I'm a 2. Maybe the high 1s. You could get me a baby aspirin and cut it in half. And maybe a Flintstone vitamin and I'll be out of your hair. You can go 10. You talking about a Flintstone vitamin. <laughs> Saying such ridiculous numbers. I couldn't bring myself to say 10 though, because I had heard the worst pain a human can endure is getting the femur bone cracked in half. And I don't know if that's true, but I thought if it is, they have exclusive rights to 10. And now I'm thinking, what was I worried about? Is there like a femur ward at the hospital they would have heard about me and hobble into my room? Who the hell? The audacity <laughs> to say he was on a level 10. <laughs> you know nothing about 10. Give me a sledgehammer. Let me show you what 10 is all about, Mr. Tommy A. No! 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 How can I possibly say 10? I can't. So I thought, I'll say nine, and then I thought, no, childbirth, I better not try to compete with that. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, you know, it must be hell giving childbirth when your femur bones crack. <laughs> mm. So I said, I, I guess I'm an eight. She goes, oh, okay, I'll be back. I'm like, oh, I blew it. <laughs> I ain't getting nothing with eight. But she surprised me. She comes in, she goes, the doctor told me to give you morphine immediately. And I'm like, morphine? That's what they gave the guy in Saving Private Ryan right before he died. I'm like, okay, I'm a, I'm a four. I'm a zero. I'm a negative 11 teen. Morphine. So they gave me morphine. Wow. All I know is about 15 minutes later, just for the hell of it, I was like, I'm an eight again. Guess who's an eight? And they finally check me out. I'm walking down the hall going, say eight, say eight, say eight, say eight. Happy eight day. Did you get some eight? Did, did you get any eight? What am I throwing? You can't throw a number. Johnny Appleseed, did you get any eight over there? 
I don't understand my own visuals. Right. <laughs> You're throwing numbers around. Now. This thing is great. So I fucking, I fucking love this dude, bro. I fucking love this dude. Nervous going because my uh, <laughs> cholesterol. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be high because last year it was high, and uh, I hadn't done anything different. <laughs> what are the odds your cholesterol is gonna plummet for no reason? Come on, two hundred. Come on, three thirty-seven. How can that be? I had Burger King coupons in my pocket. It's inexplicable. <laughs> so I was nervous. And I realized that's the only time as an adult that I feel like a little kid. Because when I go to the doctor, you didn't do what I told you, did you? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> what should you have done? I should have listened when you were talking to me. What are you going to do from now on? Pay attention when you say things. <laughs> when are you going to start? I'm going to start right now. Immediately. Oh, this dude's dumb voice is the greatest. He's got the greatest he stupid impersonation right I told him in I the world. Sometime, so he goes and he gets can act stupid better than anyone. Heartburn. I'm looking at the list and I'm like... I already know this. <laughs> I know how to get it. <laughs> That's like going into the hospital with a cannonball wound and they show you a list. Here's how you get cannonball wounds. <laughs> I already, I, I have a cannonball wound. It's gaping. Do you have a tube of cannonball wound ointment? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Number one, do not stand directly in front of a cannon. How true that is. <laughs> so, my doctor looks at me and says, uh, you should probably drop a couple pounds there, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Only your doctor has carte blanche on insults. You just insult you for a while, and then you pay him for the insults on the way out. Boy, you should lose some weight, and uh, those moles are looking pretty weird. <laughs> All right, how much for that, Doc? When can we get together again? Big fat mole man walking out of your office. Thanks for the confidence boost. I'm off to the Macy's Day Parade. Grab a rope! What does he care? You're big and you're ugly. Next. He does care. Doctors are good people. That's why they avoid the word pain. It's a buzzword. They won't hit it a lot. They don't want to scare anybody. <coughs> Doctors will tell you all about pressure. <laughs> They'll tell you all about the pressure you're going to experience. If a doctor I just, tells you about I just know this pressure, is going to be funny as fuck. <laughs> this is about to be funny as fuck. I know it is. In a moment, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure. All pain involves pressure. That's one of the definitions of pain. You could be swinging a two by four at your head. In a moment, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. Hey, bring it on. I'm good under pressure. I like pressure situations. Oh, so my doctor, he told me to watch what I'm eating, told me to read food labels. I'm in the store reading the Fig Newtons label. <laughs> I've always liked Fig Newtons. I'm trying to see if it's okay to eat them, and everything looked fine, the fat content, everything. I looked at the serving size, two cookies. <laughs> Who the hell eats two cookies? I ate Fig Newtons by the sleeve. <laughs> Two sleeves is a serving size. 
I open them both and eat them like a tree chipper. Fig Newton shavings coming off the side. Then I put a Newton catcher and empty that bag out as a snack. What the hell are they talking about? Two Fig Newtons. With the size of a poaching stamp. You want another one? Oh, I don't know. I've already had two whole entire Fig Newtons. Maybe I could try to muscle one more down, but I don't think I'm gonna. Mmm, Ryan, I'm stuck with the Raptors. They're nuts. We got an ER here. We got a three Fig Newton eater. How many did he have? What is he, nuts? Doesn't he read? Uh, 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 what is that? What? Is that like a joke some guy put on there? Hey, come here. Look what I put for the serving size. <laughs> you see? I just said it as a joke, but they're going out like that. I don't know what to do. Just let it go, I guess there's nothing you can do now. You ever know anybody to eat a half a cup of ice cream? Hey, you want to go grab some weed? Oh, no. Had a half a cup of ice cream. Yeah, a whole half a cup. I just kept eating and eating and eating. I must have had two spoonfuls. I think a serving size of ice cream is when you hear the spoon hit the bottom of the container. You know? it's a clank and you can't do this anymore. I even ripped the sock. Not sure what they're talking about for the half a cup of ice cream. I have to lay off dairy, though. That's what my doctor threw in as I was leaving his office. Oh, and I'll lay off dairy. <laughs> what the hell? What kind of blanket sweep is that? And no more happiness. <laughs> Away with you. What does he care? I'm trying to lay off dairy. I'm in the supermarket with my little cart, and I'm trying to avoid the dairy aisle. I can see they all have party hats on over there. <laughs> I'm in the juice aisle, slooped over with juice people. Huh. <laughs> I learned something in the juice aisle, and that is, I don't know what's going on with cranberries, but they're getting in all the other juices. <laughs> Whoever the salesman is for cranberries does a great job. He's showing up everywhere. Hey, what do you got, apples? Put some cranberries in them. We'll call it cran apple. Go 50-50. What do you got, grapes? How about cran grape? What do you got, mangoes? Cran mango. What do you got, pork chops? Cran chops. <laughs> Why don't you back off, cran man? <laughs> Why don't you take your sales trophy and have a vacation? He's working too hard. He's making the other fruit guys feel bad, you know? Like the banana guy wakes up. Man, I ain't into nothing. <laughs> Cram man's all coupled up. You gotta get cracking, banana man. You gotta get on a stick. My doctor also told me to, uh, you know, eat more fruit. So I, was, I had some Pop Tarts this morning. Bro. Nice thin layer in there. You ever look at a Pop Tarts box? They have directions on there. Can, can there be a simpler food item than Pop Tarts? Like if the directions weren't on there, would somebody, what the? How do I get that goodness in me? What do you do? How do you get it done? You read, man. That's what you do. They have two sets of directions. In case you don't understand one set, you abandon that whole track and get on something a little easier for yourself. They have a set of toaster directions, which, believe it or not, is more than one step. 
could there possibly be more than one step? I can only think of one. Step one, toast the Pop-Tarts. <laughs> Go ahead, toast them. <laughs> hey, are you still reading this? Uh, uh. But they've managed to break them into <coughs> smaller increments. These are some of the actual steps. I would love to be in the room watching somebody who has to consult these toaster steps. Okay, number one, remove pastry from pouch. Okay. I see where they're going with this. We're banging on all cylinders now. <laughs> Number two, insert pastry. <laughs> Vertically. Oh, oh no. <laughs> They're reading toaster direction. You're going to throw the vertical concept at them? Then they have a whole set of microwave directions. That just blew me away that you could actually microwave a Pop-Tart. I mean, how long does it take to toast a Pop-Tart? A minute, if you want them dark? People don't have that kind of time? Listen, if you need to zap fry your Pop-Tarts before you head out the door, you might want to loosen up your schedule. where it says microwave on high for three seconds. <laughs> I don't think I want to wake up and be eaten in three seconds. The alarm goes off, ah, put them in ding, I'm to get out of here. <laughs> if you're awake and eating and hauling in three seconds, you're booking yourself too tight. <laughs> pick up some Montana brochures or something. <laughs> You're not living properly. We just moved. Um, I called UPS to ask them to help out with some boxes. And, you know, they're a good service, but you have to have information ready about your boxes before you even call them. I had no idea. I called them up. Yeah, I have uh, 10 boxes. If you come pick them up. We need to know the weight and the girth. <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> So I called back, we need the weight and the girth. Okay, I don't know what the weight is, and um, I don't know what girth means. <laughs> so now what's the procedure? <laughs> so this guy talks to me like I'm four years old. Well, do you have a bathroom scale? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but if I put the box on a scale, it's going to cover up the numbers! <laughs> what, do I take them off really quick? <laughs> ah, zero! I'm not fast enough! <laughs> What's he talking about? So then he gives me, like, his Mr. Wizard formula. How about if you stand on the scale and weigh yourself, get off the scale, pick up the box, get back on, weigh you and the box together, and subtract your own weight? I'm going, slow down! Hold on, professor! I know this guy's never tried this, because I tried it, and you still can't see the numbers! Oh, shit. What am I, Mr. Olympia? <laughs> Three pounds. <laughs> then I had to hang up in the middle of his girth formula. He kept assuring me it was easy. 
You know, the girth is very simple to figure out. You take the length and you double that by the smaller of the height after you triangulate the hypotenuse from the third side. And, okay, I gotta go. I, I'm getting another call. Yeah, I'm too stupid to talk to you. I just, just want to not be on with you any longer. So this is true. I figured I would call back and just make up some numbers, you know. Let them come out and pick them up. If it's wrong, I'll pay the difference. Just dispatch the truck. <laughs> so I called back. Yeah, I, um, I have uh, ten boxes and... No, I'm another guy. <laughs> yeah, and they all weigh exactly... 22 pounds, and they'll have a girth of three. Three what? Three girth units. Come pick them up, please. I'm, I'm begging you. They're boxes, and they're brown, and they have tape all on them, and they probably fit on a dolly. Why must you torture me? Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, that's going to do it for the first part. I don't think I can take too much more. If you guys enjoyed, give your boy a like, and we can do a part two. I told you guys, this dude is funny as fuck. If you just made it through this and didn't laugh, honestly, I don't know how. This shit was just, I don't know, bro. Maybe it's, maybe it's just me, but this shit is just fucking hilarious. This, is, this dude is fucking crazy. But yeah, I don't want to talk too much. This video was long enough. But uh, comment more funny ideas below. Tweet me more funny video ideas. I don't get enough funny video ideas anymore. It's been a lot of uh, football recently. But give me some funny football ideas. And you, you know what I'm saying. I'm going to go beat my fucking bitch, man. Fucking stutter my ass off. Subscribe if you're new. Yo, we do this shit every day. We ain't missed a day yet. That's literally probably the hardest I think I've ever cried. I've cried a lot, but damn, I was just mad. I couldn't stop crying. Wow. I still got hella videos to record, too. What the fuck? Let me say this about the six former players, or for the purposes of this show, the six general managers in this draft. If there were a Mount Rushmore of NBA greatness... These six would certainly pay good money to see it. <laughs> <laughs>